Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It's such a welcome to Aurora's family here for her special day, this day of baptism. I'm Pastor Jen, and I am here as, as the pastor here at Faith, and we want to welcome you here to be among us this day. We also welcome those who are gathered online. Thank you for being here with us on this time of worship. We will begin by singing. I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing together. mine is either. I invite you to continue as together we pray our call to worship. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to worship. We gather today as people God calls to go and share the good news. We gather as God sent out people. We gather to listen and share God's work in our lives, our families, and our neighborhoods. We proclaim the goodness of God's love together. We gather to respond to God's grace as we continue on the path of spiritual growth. We hear God's call and learn to say yes to God together. We gather to again hear God's call to go as God commissions us to love God and neighbor in everything that we do. We go knowing that as God's called, gathered, and sent out people, we are not alone as we carry the weight of God's call into the world together. Amen. You may be seated. I will invite parents and sponsors and Aurora to come forward. If there are children who'd like to sit on the floor and get a closer look, you are welcome to do that. Families, I'll, I'll invite you to stand over here on this side. We begin with this. Go ahead, you can sit right up front. Yeah. We begin with what's called the presentation. It's basically explains to us what actually baptism is. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
We are born children of a fallen humanity by water and the Holy Spirit. We are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your daughter baptized into Christ? If so, please answer together, I do. I do. As you bring Aurora to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in her hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture her in faith and prayer so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Parents, do you promise to help Aurora grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, please answer together, I do. I do. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Aurora in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's spirit and to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, please answer together, I do. People of God, do you promise to support Aurora and pray for her in her new life in Christ. We do. Parents and sponsors, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? The congregation is invited to join in the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Blessed are you, O God, maker and ruler of all things. Your voice thundered over the waters at creation. You water the mountains and send springs into the valleys to refresh and satisfy all living things. Through the waters of the flood, you carried those in the ark to safety. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished them with water from the rock, and you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, your son Jesus has carried us to safety and freedom. The flood shall not overwhelm us, and the deep shall not swallow us up, for Christ has brought us over to the land of promise. He sends us to make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit. Wash away sin in this cleansing water. Clothe the baptized with Christ. And claim your daughters and sons, no longer slave and free, no longer male and female, but one with all the baptized in Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Bring her forward for the baptism. Aurora Nichols, 
I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Good job. And we have a special cloth that was tatted by her grandmother. Is that? Oh, wow. Wow. Beautiful. I invite you all to join with me. You belong to Christ, in whom you have been baptized. Alleluia. Let us pray. I'm going to place my hand on her head. There we go. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Aurora Nichols with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. And I have anointing oil. I will mark her forehead with a cross. Aurora Nichols, child of God, You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. And let us continue our prayer. Holy God, three in one, you are our eternal hope, our companion in life, our liberating power. Lead us in your mission, baptizing and teaching in your blessed name, so that all may worship you to the end of the age. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the prophet Hosea in the sixth chapter. You people say, come, let's go back to the Lord. He has hurt us, but he will heal us. He has wounded us, but he will bandage our wounds. In a short while, he will put new life into us. We will not have to wait long for him to raise us up. Then we may live in his presence. Let's learn about the Lord. Let's try hard to know who he is. He will surely come to us as surely as the dawn comes. The Lord will come to us like the rain, like the spring rain that waters the ground. The Lord says, Israel, what should I do with you? Judah, what should I do with you? Your faithfulness is like a morning mist. It lasts only as long as the dew in the morning. I have warned you by my prophets that I will kill and destroy you. My judgments will flash forth like lightning against you. I want faithful love more than I want animal sacrifices. I want people to know me. 
more than I want burnt offerings. I'm going to invite children to come forward if you'd be able to. I have something in my box that I would like to show you. And then one of you maybe can open it up and show us all what's in the box. Thank you. So who would like to see what's in the box? Do you, I saw your hand first. Do you know what that is? Hold that up. Can you show everybody what that is? Yeah. It's a pair of sunglasses. Yeah. Have you ever worn sunglasses? No? Has anybody worn sunglasses? Yeah. When do you wear sunglasses? At the beach. Why, why do you need sunglasses at the beach, do you think? So keep the sun out of your eyes. You girls can have a seat right here if it's okay. Yeah. So we wear sunglasses when the sun gets too bright, right? Sometimes. But did you know that sometimes it's cloudy and the sun is still there? Did you know that? Yeah. We just can't see it because the clouds are in the way. Well, in that reading that I just read from the book of Jose in the Bible, it says that God comes to us just like the morning sun, the dawn sun. And it helps us to remember, I think, that sometimes even when it seems that God is not there, that God is hiding behind the clouds, that God is there. And God promises to come to us, and we might even need to wear sunglasses because God is so brightly in front of us. So let's fold our hands and say a prayer. Dear God, we thank you for being there, even when we're not knowing for sure that you're there. We trust in you, that you shine as bright as the sun. Amen. Thank you. You have a seat again. Our gospel reading today is from the Gospel of Matthew. There's several stories in this reading today, so we'll talk about them a bit, but let us begin. This is from the ninth chapter of Matthew. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came, and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And instantly, the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout that district. On Friday of this week, I got a text from a friend of mine 
who is a pastor in Ohio. She texted that at that moment, she was at a hospital with a teenager who was dying of a brain tumor. Today's reading talks about miracles. A woman who has been bleeding for years is healed. A 12-year-old girl who has died is resurrected. So I have a question. Where's the miracle for that teenager in Ohio? Why not a miracle in Ohio, too? The flutes are playing in Ohio. There are sounds of mourning. Musicologists say that flutes in ancient times were made of bone. And they didn't have a melodious tone that we're used to flute players having. They were more like a whistle, tinny, shrill. They had a sound that no one wanted to listen to, and a sound that by association, no one wanted to hear. Flutists were called upon to play when someone died. In one ancient text, it says that even the poorest of the Israelites will hire two flutes and a woman to make lamentations at the time of a death. So as we heard, Jesus is on his way to a leader of a synagogue's house, and he hears flutes. It sounds like he's too late, but a miracle happens. Stop the flutes, he says. The girl is no longer dead. And yet, flutes are playing in Ohio today. We needed a miracle, and there wasn't one. Dr. Will Gaffney of Bright Divinity School says that we can't talk about God intervening supernaturally in our world without also thinking about those who desperately need a miracle and don't get it. I believe in miracles. I believe that God breaks through and does the impossible. But I know we don't always get them when we need them. And it has nothing to do with the amount of faith we have or how much we've prayed, or whether or not we deserve them. A teenager with a brain tumor deserves a miracle, I think. But nevertheless, I believe in miracles. I believe that God breaks through and does the impossible. And I don't know why or why not. There are miracles that we heard in this passage this morning. Stop the flutes, Jesus says. There's the miracle of the girl who's resurrected. There's the miracle of the woman whose bleeding is healed. And there's the miracle of the tax collector who follows Jesus. Matthew is the name of the tax collector, we hear. Tax collectors were despised by the people. They worked for the Romans. And they made a commission after the taxes that they collected. They were often the richest people in town. They were known to be cheats. And sometimes they were even banned from attending synagogue because of their reputation. Matthew, this tax-collecting cheat, is at work when Jesus walks by. Jesus says, follow me. And he does. Stop the flutes. I believe in miracles. We don't know why Matthew, the tax collector, got up so quickly to follow Jesus that day. We're not sure if the dinner was held at his house. But it seems maybe likely. Because those who gathered around Jesus would have been Matthew's kind of people. Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? The religious leaders asked the disciples. 
Jesus was always at the wrong house with the wrong kind of people. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at a tax booth, and Jesus says to him, follow me, and he got up and followed him. Stop the flutes. Who can explain it? Matthew's decision was sudden. He clearly didn't think this all out. So what made him do it? Author and pastor Frederick Buechner once said, faith is a word that describes the direction our feet start moving when we find that we are loved. Let me repeat that. Faith is a word that describes the direction our feet start moving when we find that we are loved. Matthew's feet started moving. He got up and followed Jesus. There's a Christmas story told by a man by the name of Brian Reagan. It was told to him by his father over and over again, he says. It's one of those stories that you probably think, oh, I think I've heard a version of this one before yourself. It's a Christmas story, so maybe you heard it at some Christmas Eve service or on the radio some time ago. But this is the story that Brian's father told him many, many times. There was a boy from a poor family. He and his brothers and sisters lived with their widowed mother, and they scarcely had enough money to buy food. Every day after school and on weekends, the boy worked in a store. The boy's clothes were always hand-me-downs. He couldn't remember getting anything new. He had one toy, and that toy was a little toy car. And at this point, Brian interrupts the story and says that as he thinks about it, when his father was telling the story, he always imagined a matchbox car. The toy car wasn't new either. A couple of wheels were missing and the window was cracked. But the boy loved the car. He played with the car and in his imagination, he played it in many ways. He imagined it was a race car or an ambulance or a tank. He says that almost every happy moment he had as a child had to do with that car. Well, it was Christmas time, and this boy was excited because for the first time ever, he was old enough to stay up late and go to the midnight mass Christmas Eve. He had heard about what happened there. He wanted to see it for himself. He'd heard about the music and the candles, but especially he heard about the Christmas Eve pageant with Mary and Joseph and kings who brought presents to baby Jesus. He decided that he would like to bring a present to baby Jesus. It was not a drum different story. He looked around and he found something he could bring, his toy car. So that Christmas Eve he went to midnight mass and he brought that little toy car up to the manger and he put it on the ground next to it. Just before the service was about to start, Someone from the church was looking around and found this beat-up little car in front of the manger and threw it to the side. The boy was watching from his pew, and he started to cry. But then, baby Jesus, baby Jesus, who was played by a toddler that year, climbed out of the manger, moved over to the car, picked it up, held it in his hands, and started to laugh, delighted with the car. Now, Brian Reagan often thought about why his father would tell him that story over and over again. For most of his life, he thought it was to teach him a lesson 
Why can't you be like that good little boy in the story? Or maybe he thought that his father was talking about himself and talking about all the struggles that he had growing up. His father was a difficult man, a hard man. He was an alcoholic and swore like a sailor, as they say. Never seemed to care about his children, except to yell at them. But years later, there was a miracle in Brian's life. The miracle was not that his father stopped drinking or stopped the verbal abuse to his family. The miracle was that Brian realized that he had misunderstood his father's place in that story. His father was not the poor little boy who gave everything he had to Jesus. His father was the matchbox car, missing two tires with a cracked window, longing to be held by Jesus. My father had failed in his public life, Brian said. He knew that his family disliked him. Whatever had happened in his life, it was enough to break him. He was a wreck. But despite all this, or maybe because of it, he longed to be cradled in his Savior's arms, to have Jesus still reach out to him after he had been rejected by everyone else. As Frederick Buechner said, Faith is a word that describes the direction our feet start moving when we find that we are loved. Love comes first. Not guilt, not shame, not judgment. Love comes first. Matthew got up and followed Jesus. Stop the flutes. A miracle is happening. Amen. I invite you to stand and together we sing.
I invite you to join with me in our prayers. We pray, O God, for the church. Unite us with any on the margins that the whole world recognizes that your mercy is greater than our human capacity to restrict it. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O God, for creation. Tend forests and fields and safeguard all cattle, birds, and wild animals. Preserve lakes, rivers, and oceans, and send rains to water the earth. Revive lands recovering from natural disasters. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for the nations. Awaken in our leaders compassion for people who have too often felt forgotten or neglected and inspire policy solutions that promote equity and inclusion. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for all who are in need. Accompany anyone enduring chronic illness, any who suffer in secret, and those grieving a loved one's death. Send healing for all who plead for relief from sickness or pain especially for the family and friends of Sigrid Perkins, for Lolly, Roland, Barbara, Andrew, Lane and Drew, Ken, Phil, and James. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the celebrations and concerns named by this community today. We pray with thanksgiving today for the baptisms of both Aurora and Gianna, Help them, their parents always know what a gift they have been given and give us the, the courage to support them in all ways that they need. We pray for the family of Rebecca Zamudo as her brother-in-law died this week. Comfort them in their grief. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we will receive an offering. Is there someone that would pass the plate for us this morning? Thank you, Jackie. And also, we will sing. As we receive our financial offerings, we will give a musical offering as well.
I invite you to stand as together we pray. Heavenly God, even as the first believers did in the early church, we lay our gifts at the feet of the apostles. May these gifts support the ministry of our congregation as well as strengthen the wider community. Give our leaders gifts of discernment for the wisest possible use of these resources, which we dedicate to you today. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. Amen. God, who loves us and calls us, we pray our prayer of confession. We confess that we are not always open to receiving your call on our lives. We make excuses. We choose not to listen. We believe that others would do it better than we can. Forgive us for all the times we say no or nothing at all to your call. We confess that we value the false certainty of our own path over the uncertainty of journeying with you and one another on the path of discipleship. Forgive us for all the ways we choose what we think we know over joining you in the holy unknown. We confess that we value the calls of some over others, putting the paths of some up on pedestals, while not recognizing the many who answer your call as quiet, behind-the-scenes disciples. Forgive us for neglecting the beautiful and varied calls you place on each of our lives. Forgive us, God, and free us to joyfully bear the weight of your call on our lives as members together of the body of Christ, redeemed and united by your love. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. I invite you to join with me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Please know that wherever you are in your faith journey, you are welcome to the table for Holy Communion. Jackie is going to help me with communion. I could use somebody else to help with the tray for empty glasses. Corrine, would you be able to help with that? Yeah, thank you. For those of you, I know that we have many visitors here. Don't worry, you cannot do it wrong and you are welcome to the table. We'll start on this side and you may either kneel or stand around the communion table. I will place a wafer into your hand, which you then may consume, but I also have gluten-free wafers if that is your preference. And then Jackie has a tray that has red grape juice or white wine. You may take a cup and consume it before placing it into the empty tray and returning to your seat. So we'll start on this table going from front to back, and then we'll move to this side and go from front to back. Come to the table. All are welcome.
please stand as you're able. Let us play, pray. Holy God, at your table we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. As you leave this gathering, hear God's call to go. Go into the uncertainty of the journey ahead, trusting that of this you can be certain. God is with us, and we are sent out together. We are not alone. Thanks be to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing, Shine, Jesus, Shine. Amen. Let there be light. You may be seated. I do have a couple of announcements. First of all, thanks so much to Abby Shoppy as well as Suzanne Newman for filling in our band members that are away this week. We're grateful we have so many talented folks and especially taking the time and, and rehearsing with the band to, to make, help us have our music for today. A week from today, we begin our summer schedule. We have a blended service at 10 a.m., so a single service at 10 a.m. throughout the summer beginning next week, so be sure to mark your calendars. 
Game night is tonight at my house, and so we're going to play code names. You don't need to know how to play code names, but I have several versions of code names that we can play. Let me know if you're planning on coming so I can prepare for enough snacks for everybody, but, but hope that you can join me at my house tonight at 7. Throughout the month of June, we are collecting for the People's Panty, Pantry three things, dry beans, rice, and peanut butter. And Abby had a mnemonic for this. Drip. D for dry beans, R I for rice, P for peanut butter. <laughs> so bring your drip to church throughout the month of June. And some of you know that especially as school is out, many kids get free lunch or free and or free breakfast at school. So summertime is an especially poor, important time to, to supply our food pantries. And oftentimes people forget to, to give them food. So we're making June a special month for collection. And vacation Bible school. It's happening the end of July, that last week of July, first week of August. It's going to be from 5 to 7 p.m. So hope to see many of you there, either as adults or kids or helpers or supporters in any way that you would like. Other announcements today? Let us go in peace. <laughs>